Dancing on that main street, you relax and feeling good. Next thing that you know, you see it. Yeah. How would you all like to investigate the Irrawaddy Dolphin and learn more about the smiling faces of our seas? We love to. I don't know about that. Our world is home to countless creatures, many of which are quickly becoming endangered. One of these creatures happens to be the Irrawaddy Dolphin, or Alcala Barostris. Hey, those look like the orcas from the aquarium. No, they're killer whales. You're both right. They're the same animal. An interesting fact is that the orcas are dolphins, like the common bottlenose dolphin and the Irrawaddy Dolphin. They're all part of the dolphin family. According to my research, one of the Irrawaddy dolphin's closest relatives of the same genus is the Australian snubfin dolphin. Wonderful, Keisha! Wait, this is cool and all, but where are we now? Earth to Arnold. We've reached our destination, Aie Irrawaddy River in Myanmar. The relative habitat of Irrawaddy dolphins is located in the coastal waters and large rivers of Southeast Asia, Northern Australia, and the Papua New Guinea. They prefer the fresh water of the tropical and subtropical Indo-Pacific. Does this mean that they reside in a tropical climate zone? That's right! Their habitats usually get seasonal rainfall, but rainfall is starting to decline due to climate change. They live in areas about 24 to 26 degrees Celsius on the surface, with water temperatures reaching as low as negative 2 degrees Celsius. Wait, Miss Frizzle? If it gets cold in the water, how do they stay warm? They stay warm through temperature regulation and blubber, which provides insulation. This means that they're endothermic homeotherms. That makes sense. Miss Frizzle, about the orcas, aren't they ferocious creatures and at the top of the food chain? Is it the same with Irrawaddies? Exactly, Ralphie. Irrawaddy dolphins are also consumers and apex predators. They hunt in packs and feed on fish, fish eggs, cephalopods, and crustaceans. In order to gather food, they spit water up to 1.5 meters away to herd fish. They're also known to send large fish with a blow from their lower jaw and play with them. They tend to follow the tides, following the movements of their prey. Wait, is that it? Is that the Irrawaddy dolphin? Look class, there it is! Excellent observation, Arnold. Miss Frizzle, it's dying! There's a hole near its head! Everything's alright, Phoebe. That's just its blowhole. Since Irrawaddy dolphins are mammals like us, they need a way to breathe underwater. A blowhole enables them to do so. It's like what we covered last field trip, that all animals have adaptations. We talk about three types. Which type is this adaptation? Physical? That's right, another physical adaptation is their flexible necks, which allow them to forage for food in shallow waters. Miss Frizzle, Miss Frizzle, I know a behavioral adaptation of dolphins. They communicate with each other using clicks, creaks, and buzzes. As expected of you, Keisha, great job! An example of the last type of adaptation we discussed, physiological, is the way dolphins sleep. Dolphins keep their cerebral hemisphere active to consciously breathe and stay alert to dangers. Is that a baby Irrawaddy dolphin? Looks like it. It's called a calf, kids. Male adults are called bulls, and female adults are called cows. The Irrawaddy dolphin reproduces every 3-9 to nine years, giving birth to only one calf. Mating occurs between December and June, and the birth period is from June to August. Male dolphins often mate with multiple females and compete over mates. What is that called? This is a polygenous mating system. The fertilization of the eggs is internal, and the pregnancy period lasts from 9-14 to 14 months. The ecosystem looks fantastic. How is that possible? I thought Irrawaddies would do more harm than good. Actually, it's the opposite. They keep the ecosystem balanced by keeping the fish population under control, benefiting their environment and helping the plants grow. They also play another role as bioindicators. They help us find out if something is wrong in their environment, as well as help assess the quality of it. We then take this information and use it to help protect other marine animals, making them beneficial to the overall ecosystem as a whole. If their ecosystem is thriving so much, why are their numbers still decreasing? Well, Phoebe, although they do help their ecosystem, the ecosystem needs time to balance itself. However, humans are causing harm to the ecosystem faster than it can repair itself. Water pollution along with a higher concentration of pesticides, chemicals, and sewage contaminates the habitat. Humans also overfish their prey and sometimes even catching the Irrawaddies. Uh, Miss Frizzle, if they're endangered, why is that man fishing in their habitat? What, what do you think you're doing, doing fishing here? here? You're, you're harming, harming an endangered, endangered population. population. What endangered population? I'm just doing my job, boss. The Irrawaddy Dolphin. Oh, this is a huge misunderstanding. I have nothing to do with the dolphins. I'm simply looking for a shark catfish to make a quick buck at the market. You mentioned earlier that these species are endangered, but I see so many healthy families of Irrawaddy dolphins. How could they be endangered? We are actually at a wildlife sanctuary. Since these populations are so scarce, the World Wildlife Foundation has established wildlife sanctuaries all across Southeast Asia. 
The World Wildlife Foundation, WWF, works with local communities to further de the development of fishery management zones to help sustain the fish population and in turn sustain the Irrawaddy dolphin population. Additionally, sustainable hydropower infrastructure is encouraged by the WWF to maintain the integrity of marine ecosystems. The effort emphasizes saving the ecosystem as well as saving the Irrawaddy dolphin population as it's simply a byproduct of large-scale marine ecosystem conservation. How do you know you're not harming the Irrawaddy dolphins? Uh, I just looked for the catfish, boss. To be honest with you, I did catch a couple of the dolphins by accident. Real nice skin and priceless smile, but nothing profitable. According to my research, Irrawaddy dolphins are primarily victims of bycatch, which is the accidental capture of aquatic animals and fishing equipment. This is a result of the psychological and instinctual nature of organisms to accept human bait and remain trapped in fishing equipment. Additionally, their nature to linger near the surface and their occasional gasp for air make the Irrawaddy dolphin an extremely popular target in marine hunting. Because of people like you, Irrawaddy dolphin populations have been on the decline for the past 50 years and will continue to as a result of bycatch, habitat degradation, and pollution. Additionally, they mostly reside in water bodies that are the most vulnerable to human impact and activity. Thus, as global climate change is only worsening, so will the conservation of the Irrawaddy population. The Irrawaddy dolphin is trending towards extinction, as the raised awareness isn't enough to offset the effects of detrimental human activity. So what? Doesn't matter to me. I have a family to feed, and you children aren't helping. Go away. If the Irrawaddy dolphin goes extinct, there will be serious consequences for the local ecosystem and the biosphere as a whole. The biological niche of these dolphins is to act as apex predators and regulate the populations of, of lower trophic levels. In the case of extinction, there would be uncontrolled growth of fish, cephalopods, and crustaceans. This would result in a major decline in the marine plant populations, causing a complete disruption of the ecosystem. Wonderful job, class. I'm so proud of you all.